What's up? This is Jacob Palmer from Palmer Electrical. Thanks for tuning back in. As always, if you like what you see in the video, leave a like, leave a comment what you thought, and hit that subscribe button if you feel compelled to do so. I'm at my customer's house today doing a few things throughout the house. I changed their attic exhaust fan motor, uh, and then I'm also adding a few receptacles throughout the house. One of the receptacles I'm adding in the garage is a single gang box with a GFCI outlet, and then we're gonna turn it into a two gang box uh, with a quad outlet, with a GFCI, prote GFCI protecting a regular outlet next to it. If you're in the electrical industry already, this will be pretty simple for you, but leave a comment on how you think I did. Maybe if you're a homeowner or if you're trying to DIY something similar, um, you can get some wisdom from the video. You can get a little bit better uh, information. I'm a licensed electrician in North Carolina. I do this work all the time. This is very common for me. And then this task specifically is something that gets done pretty frequently just because People want outlets, it's for convenience. People just need places to plug stuff in. People don't like having to use extension cords and that's dangerous and also annoying. So that turns into work for me. But without any further ado, let's get into the garage and get started. All right, here we are. Uh, here's the work area here. We're gonna expand on this outlet here, clear out our work area and we'll get a little bit closer and I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're gonna do. All right, so here we are. We're gonna take this outlet right here and we are going to turn it into a quad outlet with one GFI and one regular receptacle so that you have four places to plug in here. This was originally a circuit installed dedicated uh, for the uh, irrigation controller box here. This controller just is running a, a valve system. There's no pumps or anything. So I'm not um, worried about overloading the circuit. And, and also this isn't something that pulls power continuously. So I decided that I was okay with expanding this one right here that was installed originally to power this, but um, my customer has asked me to expand this one here. So as an overview before we get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the power to this circuit here. We're gonna remove the cover plate, we're gonna remove the receptacle. We're gonna cut the drywall out to fit our new box. Then we're gonna pry out the old box in the wall and remove it. Then we'll install our new box in the wall and fish the existing wire into it, get the new box mounted, and both new receptacles installed. For materials for this job, you need your receptacles that you're gonna install. You could reuse this GFI, but I'm gonna to choose to install a new GFCI here, and then you need a regular receptacle. Then you need a two gang box. I'm gonna install one of these two gang screw in boxes here. You can see there's two screws that go in through the side. It goes in and screws into a stud. These have to be installed right here next to a stud. An alternative to this is you can use a standard two gang cut in box that uses these plastic ears to clamp against the uh, drywall. That's also an acceptable method, but since uh, we're right here and there, I know that there's a stud right here because this is an original nail on box, then I can install this and mount it with the screws and it'll be much stronger. And you're also gonna need a, a scrap of the appropriate size wire. This is a 15 amp circuit, so I've got some 14 gauge wire here that I'll use to make pigtails in the new box. If it's a 20 amp circuit, then you need 12 gauge wire for this purpose. Even if it's just pigtails, all your pigtails have to be the uh, sized correctly for your circuit. And then some basic tools you're gonna to need. You're gonna need a level and a drywall knife or a drywall saw or a jab saw. You're also gonna need a, a pry bar. This is just one of my old beater screwdrivers here. We're gonna use this to pry the old box out of the wall. And then I'm gonna use my Klein Tool circuit tester here to track down where the breaker is. It's right here and I can see that this one has the same dedicated label as that one. So it seems likely, yep. Okay, perfect. Let's get started. I have a weird uh, little stubby flathead that I keep in my shirt pocket for cover plates. It's also useful as a little pry bar when I need it to be. Oh, also while you're setting up, go ahead and grab a trash receptacle to keep your work area clean while you're working. All right, good. Just one wire coming in here. I'm gonna just give it a little test with my beep tester here. Looks good. Perfect, now we've only got one wire coming into the box here. If you had multiple wires coming into this box with wires coming in and wires coming out, then it'll be important to mark which wire is your line side for your GFCI. 
GFCI receptacles have a line side and a load side. The line side is power coming straight from the panel, and then the load side is power coming out of the GFI that is GFCI protected. So if you wanna use this GFI device to protect other receptacles, you need to feed those other receptacles from the load side, the hot and the neutral. It's important to keep these separated. If you pull power from the line side or you get it reversed, it's not gonna work. If you're not using this GFI to protect other appliances or other devices, then you don't use the load side. If there are multiple wires, you should mark the line side and I just like to use a little piece of tape I just like to wrap some tape around these wires but that's not necessary in this case so I'm going to proceed with this and the ground perfect we'll get rid of the old GFI and then now we're going to cut out this opening big enough for our two gang box and we're going to do this now uh, because that makes it a lot easier to pry out this single gang box without damaging the rest of the area around it. Uh, it it's possible to get this box out through this hole without damaging the other stuff, but it's a lot more difficult and time consuming. Tuck these wires back into the box here. Make sure the top and the sides line up. I'm going to go ahead and get my level here. We're looking out with this uh, little pipe here. If this were any closer, we probably wouldn't uh, be able to do this. Level and lined up. I'm gonna use my pencil and make marks around the top side and bottom. There we go. Get that cut out. I like to get my knife started on all the sides first, just to help keep the sheetrock from breaking around it. There we go. All right, set the cut out. Get that in the garbage. So it looks like this was a there's a piece of horizontal blocking right here at the bottom of this wall here. They installed this nail on box all the way down against this uh, piece of uh, blocking here. Luckily for us, that's not going to be a problem since we're going to use one of these. We kind of lucked out there. If you come across this and with uh, one of these cut in boxes, the the top ear here has something to grab onto, but the bottom doesn't have anything to grab onto here. It, it wouldn't be able to swing out and clamp. So uh, in, in my case specifically here, this is gonna be just about the only way to go, unless you use one of these and you just send your own screws through the side, but we like to do things the way they were intended. Pull this out. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pliers and carefully get up inside the box here and loosen up the integral clamp. Here's the two pieces of plastic that kind of clamp onto the wire in the back of the box. I like to get those loose so that our wire can be removed from the box easily. There we go. Feels loose now, that should be good. Okay, so now that since we've cut this out, getting this box pried out will be really easy. I'm gonna get my screwdriver into the side here. There we go. There we go, perfect. And you could almost reuse this box, but that's getting thrown away. I wanna get more of this dust out of here. We're prepped for our two gang box. Let's get it put back together. This box here has knockout style uh, openings and it comes with connectors and plugs for the holes that you're not using. We need one of these, one of these, one of these, and then uh, just one of these. Box is going in the wall like this, so these bottom two are just gonna get plugged like that. And then the top one, I'm gonna get a plug, and then I'm gonna use one of the pop-in Romex connectors like this on the side closest to the stud. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my screwdriver, and I'm just, I'm just gonna loosen it just a little bit. Not a ton, don't break it. Pry the jaws apart just a little bit. You take your wire and you feed it through. Take your time on this step here to make sure that you don't damage your wires. 
even though it is just plastic parts here, plastic connectors, that it is possible for it to, to damage the insulation if you get it the wrong way. So just take your time, especially if you have multiple wires and especially if they're from above and below. That's a lot more difficult, um, but it's possible you just have to take your time doing it. In my case here, this will be pretty easy. Pull it in, make sure that the sheathing of the Romex ends up inside the box. Just like that. Our box is in, so we're just gonna use these screws here and fasten it down. The one thing about these screw-in type boxes is you do have to be mindful of how of the depth. You can't be too shallow, otherwise you won't be able to get your receptacles to sit flush against the wall and you can't go too deep because that's a code violation. You only have a quarter inch of depth that you can go before it becomes a code violation, so you gotta take your time on this step and just make sure that you're gonna get it. And also the good thing about these screw up boxes here, or these screw on boxes is they're adjustable. So if you miss it on the first go, you can try again. All right, there it is. It's very secure in there now. So we'll get started on uh, wiring this up and installing our new devices. These two wires here are the line side for the GFI. So these two wires are going to go directly to the GFCI device. The ground wire here, I'm going to pigtail off to uh, grounding pigtails to attach to our two devices. And then we need two black and white wires for the hot and neutral for our second uh, standard duplex receptacle. So first let's get our ground pigtails. I measure off eh, about eight inches or so for these types of uh, pigtails in a two gang box like this. Twist these together, always pre-twist. Don't be the guy who says, well, the manufacturer, the manufacturer states you, you don't have to pre-twist your wire nut. Pre-twist your wire nuts, that, it doesn't make sense not to. It creates a mechanical connection here. So these wires already, as they sit, have an effective path between them, at least for the you know this ground wire here. The wire nut just helps to cap it off and hold it tight. A Wago would also be effective uh, for this application. But I don't have any of those with me, so we're just going to get this pushed back and then one pigtail for both sides here. If you're thinking of starting a business like mine, consider Project to Payment for your CRM needs. A lot of the big names, they're pretty expensive and have features that a small business like mine just, you know, don't need, but you have to pay for them. My channel partner, Project to Payment, offers a streamlined and simple CRM software package for small businesses and entrepreneurs just like me. Click the link in the description or use code Palmer at checkout for three months free. I use it for my business, for my scheduling, my invoicing, estimating card payments, customer info storage, everything. And it does a really good job. So click the link in the description or use code Palmer. Again, that's projecttopayment.com. Use code Palmer at checkout for three months free. Don't just take my word for it. Give it a try. I bet you'll like it. So now I'm going to hook up the hot and neutral pigtails to the load side of the GFI, which does two things for me. Uh, one, it makes it easier to install the uh, duplex when we get around to do it, but it also helps to prevent uh, line and load mix-ups. When I go to attach the line conductors, the load terminals are already taken. Pre-bend those off to the side there. Then I'm gonna go ground. Perfect. Then I'm gonna go neutral. Then our hot, our ungrounded conductor. Get that tightened down. Now it's not strictly necessary, but it's something that I like to do. Um, just as a measure to help to prevent uh, shorting inside this box, I'm gonna take some electrical tape and wrap it around the GFI, just around the terminals, get those covered up. What this does is it prevents, or helps to prevent a, uh, a bare ground wire getting folded up back into the box and then accidentally touching the side whenever it's all closed up. We've got our line conductors coming from the wall. We've got our load side of the GFI going to the pigtail wires. I'm gonna get this in and I'm just going to get the GFI partially screwed in. Just partially for now. Now we can get our duplex wired up. I'm gonna strip our conductors and bend their hooks. Strip, 
hook and a hook on the ground wire. And then I always go in the same order. I go ground, and then I go neutral, and then I go hot. And then I like to get the unused screw terminals screwed in, just out of the way. Yeah. Perfect. My girlfriend picked out yellow tape for me this time. I like to let her pick out my uh, my tape for just general stuff. Obviously, if you're using it for phasing and identifying wires, you can't just let your girlfriend pick the colors unless she knows what she's doing. Then maybe, you know. All right. Get this outlet screwed in. Let's get the other one tightened up. I like to use a the cover plate, make sure everything's gonna come together all lined up. All right, got both of those installed and our cover plate lines up well. I'm gonna get my little baby screwdriver back out. Let's button it up and test it. All right. One last detail, if you look closely, you can kind of see that the outlets kind of face back and forth just a little bit. I like to use my plug tester, stick it in there, and if you push in, you should push in and then twist just a little bit. Don't put too much force into this. Don't break your outlets. Use your good judgment, but uh, plug it in and you can use this to just kind of get it to sit a little bit more even. This other receptacle looks good here. Let's turn them on and test it out. These GFIs trip when they're powered on for the first time, at least this brand. Let's hit the breaker. There we go. Reset this. Perfect. Powered up. And we've got a really nice flush installation here. Nice and even and square. We're not done yet. Even in the garage. Vacuum up your chromes, please. And that's how it's done. Thanks for watching. Like I said, this one's a pretty simple one. If you're one of my viewers who's already in the industry, this is just a review for you. But hopefully I was able to help somebody or if you're just learning. I love uh, reading everybody's comments. I get a lot of people who talk about how they are just apprenticing or they're thinking about getting into the trade and my videos are a good source of information about what the day-to-day -day is like and what you're, you know, you're actually doing, at least in my type of work as a residential service electrician. So with that being said, leave your comments. I love reading them um, and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. This has been Jacob Palmer from Palmer Electrical. Take care.